Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Juan Londoño for those of you that don't know me and today's topic is a very popular one. How to use your cell phone to take pictures that will sell your car fast. Those of you that follow the channel and have seen me before have heard me say jokingly that I don't know why they call this thing a phone. You know, I think 90% of the people use it for everything except calling, right? We use it for social media, email, we use it for bills, for buying things, we use it for maps, we use it for everything, for the news, for texting the entire world. God forbid we, we picked it up and called somebody, right? So, but you know, it has a, a good camera and, and it does have a phone if you ever need a phone. But the truth is, this is very popular nowadays and it's the only camera that most of us have. And you know the saying, the best camera is the camera you're carrying. So if this is all you're carrying, then it's a wonderful camera. Use it. My daughter has her, her phone. It's her first phone. She's so excited. She takes pictures of everything. She takes little videos of everything. And I love that. I love, love, love that. When I was 11 years old, I got my first little Vivitar, you know, uh, small 120 millimeter camera. I mean, sorry, 110 millimeter camera. And it was those small little rolls. And I started taking pictures of everything. And you know, the truth is my parents couldn't afford to develop. Back then you had to develop film, buy film and develop film. And it just became too expensive. So the camera kind of disappeared on me. I never really knew where it went, right? So it's wonderful that kids and all of us can walk around with this and we can take plenty of pictures. Just don't forget to download them onto your computer and send some away to print. You know, I have a video that I'll link at the end uh, making sure you print your pictures because that's the whole thing. You want to have them somewhere where they're easily accessible. Now, if you follow the channel, you know that we kind of do things a little uh, different here. We go into a little more detail. So we're not just going to talk about what buttons to push, what settings uh, to put your camera in and kind of what pictures to take. We also have to talk about the car, right? If we're going to do this right, let's cover it end to end. So for point number one, we start with automobile preparation. So for starters, if we're serious about selling our car and we want to get rid of it fast, right? We're trying to sell it fast so either we can buy another one or we need the money for something else or whatever. Um, we need to take it serious, right? Like everything else in life that we want to do, whether it's start a business or raise a family, we have to take it serious, right? So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we either detail the car or get it professionally detailed. Either way is fine. Besides covering the obvious, which is the fact that the car is going to be looking really good in good shape, it does two main things here, right? The first one is it shows your customer that comes to look at the car and they may be driving or even flying in depending on what car you're selling. Um, it shows them that you value their uh, opinion, you value their time, right? They didn't just take a, a trip to see this thing that's, you know, that you misrepresented in the photos and is actually falling apart. You wanna make sure this car is detailed properly so when they come and see it, it looks just as beautiful as it does in the pictures, right? So take the time to detail the car. I prefer detailing it myself, but of course you don't have to. You can pay somebody else that knows a lot about cars, right, um, to do it. The second point is that it shows that you actually care about your car. Uh, when you present your car, just like when you present yourself, you present yourself well, your clothing fits you, it's not falling off of you, um, the clothing is in good shape, it's not torn or ripped or whatever, or worn, you know, that speaks volumes about how you perceive yourself. Well, when you present your car to the public for sale, what you're showing them is how you perceive your car, right? So what are some of the things you want to do real quick? I don't want to get into car detailing here because that's not the topic of this video per se. So we're just going to cover it really high level. But what are the things you want to do? You want to wash and wax your car. Uh, make sure it's, it's detailed, the paint is detailed, right? You want to make sure the wheels, the tires are clean. You want to go in the interior, remove all the dust, vacuum, you know, any junk in the pockets for the doors. You want to take all that out. You may even want to empty out the glove compartment because if you're showing your car, they may ask if it's okay to look at the glove compartment to see how roomy it is, right? So you want to have all that stuff cleaned out if you're showing your car. The center console that goes between you and the passenger, maybe have that emptied out all nice and clean inside as well. You want the windows to be completely see-through. You don't want fingerprints and gook on the windows. The car may be clean, but maybe the windows were clean on the outside and they're not clean on the inside. You want to make sure everything is covered end to end. And when I normally clean my car every two or three weeks, one of the things I do is I take it very seriously because dust collects humidity, moisture, 
and moisture corrodes the paint. So when you look at paint on the outside of a car and it looks like it's kind of rough, you know, you put your hand over it and it's not nice and smooth, it's because people that own that car don't wash it enough. The dust stays on there and it could be pollen, it could be any type of dust. And it collects moisture through the night, right, when it's parked outside. The morning comes, all the cars outside dry up quickly, except those that are caked with dust. When you have a thick layer of dust on your car, it collects and retains moisture for a long period of time. While everything else around is drying, that thick layer of dust down at the bottom is still wet. So that paint is getting corroded, eaten into by the water. And over a period of time, that's what damages paint. So what I do is I go into the sills. That's when you open your door, the jams, the door jams. Uh, you open the door, it's the part that you step into if you're like stepping into a truck. Um, I clean those out like they were any other part of the car every two or three weeks when I wash my car. So what that does is when I want to sell my car 10 or 15 years later, because I tend to hold on to my cars, people look at that part of the car and it looks like, like you can eat off of it, right? The way I think when I'm washing the car and cleaning that part is I think of my wife and I say, if my wife and my daughter are wearing a white dress, can they step in and out of that car easily? without having to worry that their dress or their white pants are going to get dirty, right? And if you don't have a girlfriend or a wife, just imagine your mom or anybody that, you know, a female that you know, uh, if you were going to give them a ride, do they have to worry about getting into your car? Or can they just get in and out without even thinking about it because your car is so clean that they're not going to get dirty? When you clean your car that way, then you have nothing to worry about. 10 or 15 years later, when you go to sell it, or five years later, and you try to detail it, some of those things that you never cleaned, that you neglected for five or 10 years or 15 or 20 years, when you try to clean them just to sell it, it's too late. Those door jams that held dust for 10 years, you can no longer get that dust out. When you start scraping it off, you start damaging the paint. That's what happens when you don't do things right. So this is a warning to anybody that has a car, you only had it for a year or two. This is a good time to take those little cleaning you know, assignments seriously. So when you clean those door jams, you know, just clean them like you would clean any other part of the car. And uh, when you go to sell the car, they're going to look as new as they did when the car was just bought. Okay, so now we got the whole car thing out of the way, the preparation. So you're good with the car, the car is ready to sell, it's going to sell itself. Now you just have to take good pictures. So the second thing I want to get into, point number two, is location. Now we all love the sun, and I'm no different from anybody else, but I will tell you, if you put your car in direct sunlight, it's going to be very difficult to photograph. So preferably, preferably, what you want to do is you want to put it in the shade, okay? Now you might say, but Juan, I live in Florida and I'm in the middle of nowhere, I have no shade. There's shade everywhere, right? If you wait, you know, if you do it early in the morning when the sun's on one end, then you just have to get on the side of a building. It could be a side of a store that hasn't opened. And, and you take pictures of your car or your truck there, right? Or your motorcycle, whatever it is. Um, if it's later in the day, the sun's on the other end. You find another building and maybe that's the side of the building you want to be on or your home or wet, wherever, the school you go to. And you just park your vehicle and you take pictures there because you want to avoid being in direct sunlight. It makes the pictures more challenging, not only on the outside, but even when you're in the inside shooting the interior, it makes pictures challenging when the sun is really bright. If you stay in direct sunlight, you're gonna get a lot of glare in your pictures and you're gonna get sunspots. And yeah, your vehicle will still look clean and well taken care of, but those things are gonna get in the way of the viewer focusing on your car. Another thing to think about is don't pick a location that has a lot of clutter. What do I mean by clutter? You park your car somewhere and you start taking pictures of the outside and there's a mall across the street with, you know, thousands of people going in and out. Mm, that's going to draw attention to the people looking at your car, right? Say you park in a really cool little place by the beach and it has a few restaurants nearby. Yeah, that looks really cool before everything opens. But, you know, again, you're showcasing the neighborhood, not your car. So you want to stay away from stuff like that because imagine this. Here you are at home and your phone rings, right? Bring! And then phones don't ring like that anymore. <laughs> and you put up your phone and you say, hello. Oh, hi, are you selling that, that red you know, pickup truck? Yes, yes, I am. I just wanted to ask you, 
What location is that that you have your car? That is the coolest place, you know. I happen to be in, in Georgia and I want to take my, my family out, uh, you know, to some restaurants and we want to walk around and that place looks perfect. Really? Now, it's great to help people, right? You want to help people and it's nice that you're able to help somebody find a good vacationing spot. But <laughs> that's not the reason you have your car for sale, right? Let's face it. You want to get rid of your car. Make sure your car isn't around other clutter, right? Sometimes we park in places like parks and there happens to be a garbage can, you know, like 10 feet from the car. It doesn't look like a big deal until you're on the other side of the car taking pictures and there's a garbage can in half of the pictures that you're taking. So, you know, think about these things, right? An another thing you, you, you want to avoid is, and this is not really so much on the side of clutter, but of more of strategy when you're taking your pictures is avoid uh, being in the picture with whether it's you know your finger or uh, or just your shadow in the pictures right it happens a lot and sometimes it's difficult to avoid depending on where the Sun is and what kind of camera you have but you know lens you have and, and setting uh, but just try to avoid you know being in the in the shadows of the pictures now if you're taking a picture straight into the side of the car you may find yourself in a reflection that might be okay. That's not the worst thing in the world, right? People know you're taking pictures of your car. But if you can avoid the distractions of people looking at the ground and, and seeing the shadow of you taking uh, the picture, that, that's a little better for you. So basically, try to find a location that doesn't have many things that viewers' eyes will wander towards. You want to focus them on your car. This one is not so obvious, but I thought about it when I was taking notes. You know, I stop and I think, I meditate on what, what would, I, would I, I want to avoid? Or if I'm buying a car, what would make me speculate, right? If I'm looking at a car and the, and the person that's selling the car is taking pictures at the place where they washed it, that looks to me like they're bragging about the fact that they washed their car, which probably means that they don't wash it very often. That's not a great, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's more psychology, right? But you want to show the car in a park, on a beach, wherever you think is cool, but not in the place where you washed it, even though it may be a cool place where there aren't any distractions. But if you can see the, you know, the, the oil on the floor of, that you use to you know, polish your tires, uh, then it looks like that's where you cleaned your car. And you want to avoid doing that, right? Keep it away from where you washed it or cleaned it. Now we start getting into photography. Number three is camera settings. Now, when we play with these devices, um, we tend to, you know, take pictures of food, take pictures of people, portrait shots, and we put these phones in that mode. We put it in portrait mode, which kind of blurs out the, the background and the foreground. We put it in food mode when we're taking pictures at restaurants because it kind of does the same thing to food and it highlights the center dish, right? So if you accidentally keep it in those modes and you're taking pictures of your car, it's going to make your pictures look funky. Make sure your camera is away from any of those modes, okay? Another thing you want to think about is making sure that all your filters that you may use for whatever, you know, social media app you play around in, whether it's TikTok or Snapchat or whatever it is, Instagram, you want to make sure those filters have been removed. Or even if it's just your camera and you, and you have some filters on there. You don't want to represent your car with weird hues, right? The colors that aren't right, old-fashioned look, things like that. Your car needs to look in those pictures exactly how it's going to look when they come to, to look at it live, right? When that person comes to give you the cash to drive away with your car, that car has to look like it does in the pictures. Otherwise, they're going to be upset. It's going to look like you represented that car incorrectly. Okay? If you're already into photography and you understand some, you know, some of the concepts, Feel free to put this device in pro mode. You know, this is, a, this is a, an Android device, so it's called pro mode, like professional. Um, you know, I don't know what the iPhone uses. It, it may have a pro mode or a manual mode, uh, but that's where you're not letting the camera decide what to focus or what color or what aperture, right, shutter speed. You can actually set all that on your phone manually, you know, with slide bars. So if you know enough and you know what you want to do, Go ahead and do that. Otherwise, just keep it on fully automatic. Fully automatic is what the phone is on, you know, 99% of the time. When you buy a phone, that's what it is. It's, it's automatic. It's, it's focusing, you know, itself. Now, keep in mind, if you're taking pictures of something and you want to focus that particular thing, whether it's a knob on your dashboard or whatever feature, you know, make sure you tap your phone where you want it to focus. You want that, 
that uh, feature enhanced on your phone, I mean not enhanced, activated on your phone where you touch whatever you want to focus. You don't want the phone to focus whatever it wants to focus, right? If you're taking a picture of a bunch of stuff on your dash and you want one thing focused in particular, then you have to let it know, okay? Before we continue, you know there's something I want to talk about and it's water. Water break time. Go get your water. Pause the video, take a break, take a walk, go get some water. Whether you like it hot, cold, whatever, room temperature, get some water. You like it with tea, coffee, milk, I don't care. Get some water. It's time. You know I drink more water than what you see me drink. It's, it's the only time that you see me drink water, but I put, you know, the video gets paused and I drink water all the time, just so you know. So point number four is now we're getting into the actual shooting itself. We're going to talk about interior shots. When we're photographing the interior of the car, you want to, we're going to be using both modes, wide angle, right? And also telephoto where you're zooming into something. For wide angle, we're going to be using that mostly for the dashboard, right? You want to show the dashboard. Um, and in order to do that, you probably will be sitting in the back somewhere if you have a back seat. And don't hesitate to throw your seats back, get them out of the way. The last thing you want when you're shooting your dashboard is to see the front seats in the way. You don't want to do that. So you want to throw the, the front seats out of the way completely so that they're not in the way. And then you sit back there somewhere and you take pictures of the entire dash. So that's a good reason to have a wide angle shot. So set your phone to wide angle, right? Um, another one is if you're from the side, you want to show the seating space, the seating capacity, front leg room, rear leg room, right? If you want to show a picture sitting in the front and you want to show the back, then you have to throw the seats towards you. You're going to sit in the front, kind of where the dashboard is, and you're going to be shooting the back of the car and you need to throw those seats forward so you can see the whole back. I didn't shoot one for this for this uh, demo, for this uh, video. I should have done that one, but very easy picture. But you're going to have that camera on wide angle. If you want to show leg room, right? You want to kind of look down and show the leg room. You can't be sitting there because your legs are going to show. You have to be in the back seat again. Throw that front seat back and you show leg room. And you can do that in the back seat as well, right? So wide angle is very useful in the interior. Let's face it, no matter what car you have, the whole purpose of the interior shots is to make the car look like it's in good shape, right, one, and two, like it's a very comfortable car, and you know, and maybe even three, that it has everything that people need, the basic needs, right, whether it's cruise control or radio or stereo or whatever, right? So um, you're going to use wide angle to show as much as you can, and then you're going to use close-up. When do we use close-up? Well, if you want to show certain knobs or features in your, in your car, like for example, you have a premium sound system, maybe you replace the speakers and you want to show them up close, uh, maybe you want to show your navigation system, maybe you have a head-up display, HUD, um, that hits your windshield, you know, whatever it is, right? Um, anything you want to highlight, first, make sure it's, there's no dust on it, because when you get close-up, you start seeing dust on things, right? So you wanna make sure you have a rag with you the day that you are taking those pictures, right? No paper, try to stay away from paper towels because they're gonna create dust. So use like a, uh, some kind of, a, you know, the kind of rags that you have for cleaning your car and just wipe it down a couple times, maybe even moisten the rug so it can lift the dust. And uh, they have anti-dust like uh, static, you know, uh, you know um, rags that you can buy that when you wipe them across stuff, they, they draw the, the dust uh, into them, right? So maybe that's a good kind of cloth to buy for that day. So the whole point of a zoom or a close-up mode is just to highlight features, right? For example, you have leather. You want to get really close up and show the leather stitching, show the, the condition of your leather seats that, you know, even though you've had the car for five or ten years, they're still in excellent shape because you took care of them. All of that is very important. Another important shot here, even though we're talking about interiors and this is kind of an exterior shot. You're going to be sitting in the driver's seat when you take it. Take a picture of the of the view that the driver has when they're looking through the windshield. That's a nice that's a nice picture to take. You know, I wasn't in the best location for it. I was in a park but I was kind of pulled over to the side. But you want to show people what you're seeing. And the best place is maybe just go to a parking lot, right? That's going to be the safest place. Go to a parking lot where you have a really nice wide view and just take a picture looking through your 
through the you know driver's seat right windshield and uh and that gives everybody the view of, of you know your windshield is nice and big make sure that picture is nice and bright too right don't pick a rainy day because it's going to look it's going to take away from you know the selling point and last but not least when it comes to interior pictures make sure you take one or two pictures with all your lights on in the inside turn turn the lights on you know the exterior lights on will turn all your bulbs on in the inside you want to show that um, your bulbs are all working basically right if you need to wait till the evening I didn't do that for my pictures here to show you in the video you may want to uh, include a little video where you turn on all your lights in the interior and you show that everything's working right dome lights the feet lights all that stuff for, you know foot lights for cars that have them um, you want to show that all that is in tip-top shape that you've not neglected that all of this will help you sell your car a lot quicker right I mean it's, it's the truth a person gets there, your car looks immaculate on the outside, looks immaculate on the inside, and uh, everything's working. I mean, you know, there's nothing to argue at that point, right? It's easier for you to get what you're asking. Now for point number five of this video, we're going to exterior shots. One of the things we need to remember is that we have to show and let everybody know that this car is not dinged or crashed, or that it is, right? We have to be honest and upfront because the last thing you want is somebody to take that trip and see like, you know, your, your rear bumper dented and pushed in. And they're going to say, dude, you, you didn't show me this. Why didn't, because I wouldn't have taken this trip if I had seen this. And they're going to be upset, right? And, and, and it's not right. So what you want to do is take a picture from each side and you want to be again in a wide mode, right? You want to be in, in wide angle. Um, Make sure you cover. Now, you don't have to be in wide angle. You know, you can be in regular lens, not in close up. But in the, so my camera has a close up, a regular, and a wide angle. I normally put it in regular, and then I'll just walk back a little more if I have that space because it doesn't distort the sides. When you open up your camera too wide, it tends to distort the sides of the, um, you know, uh, of the lens, right? So your extreme endpoints are going to look kind of warped. So what I tend to do instead is I'll put it in the middle mode, which is the regular camera. It's not wide and it's not close up. It's just regular camera. And I rather step back a little and the picture comes out less distorted. So if you want to do that, just keep it in regular camera mode and walk around your car and make sure you get every angle. And if you're showing pictures, just cross out your license plate. Nobody needs to see your license plate. That's information that nobody needs, right? It's, it's personal information. Keep it to yourself. If you don't know how to do that, you know, in post-production on a computer, just go ahead and cut out a little piece of paper and put it over your license plate when you're taking the pictures. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Just don't forget, when you drive off, don't leave that paper covering your license plate because that will get you a big ticket. A nice, big, juicy, fat ticket. The police may wonder if you're on your way to rob a bank or something. Mm -mm, not good. Get it off. <laughs> Is there ever a need to use close-up on the exterior? Absolutely. For example, if you have a new emblem that you replaced and it looks a little different from the emblem you had, like BMW is black and blue with white, and some people put red and black and white, uh, if you want to show something like that, if you're a car enthusiast, you know, many people that know about cars are going to know when you put that on that you're into racing or you're a car, a car enthusiast. Uh, if you have a spoiler, a splitter, if you have new paint features that you've added, stripes, right? Stuff like that. You want to do some close-ups. You might even want to do some random close-ups just to show the condition of your paint. Um, if you have nice wheels, you want to go down and you want to zoom in and show that they're in good shape. Maybe show what brand they are, if it's a you know popular brand that people want. Maybe you took those ugly yellow lights. See, lights used to be made out of glass, but it's heavy and it's a little more dangerous in a car wreck. So now they're made out of plastic, right? All your lights, exterior lights, plastic. What happens is they start turning yellow. You've probably seen that, right? As cars get older, they turn yellow, and then you have to go through this procedure to get them buffed out. That's a good point. If your lights are yellow, let me teach you a quick trick. If you don't want to pay to have that, because that's going to cost you money, right? To have that, you know, taken off, you got to buff them out, or you have to replace them, right? Uh, take a little bit of WD-40. You can go to your local hardware store. It's basically oil. Oil that you use to lubricate your doors so they don't squeak. Basic oil that you use at home to lubricate your doors or any machinery, okay? Put it on a little rag, spray a little on a rag, and wipe your lights. Your lights are going to look brand new. I do this with my truck. The truck that you're looking at in all these pictures has yellow lights. I have new lights. 
but I haven't put them on yet. So what I do when I wash it every two weeks, and it'll last about a week. You're going to have to do it every week because the oil dries up, right? And with the rain and the weather, the sun. Uh, but if you do it every week, those lights are going to stay looking pretty good and more light comes out because when they're opaque yellow like that, they block a lot of light. They're not even, you know, safe for you to be driving around in. So put a little bit of oil, WD-40, anything you can get your, holes on, uh, get your hands on, maybe even some cooking oil, I don't know, vegetable oil. I've never tried it. I'm sure it works. Just don't cake it on too thick. You want to do it lightly, okay? Um, but another reason why you would want a close-up is if you know, once I do put new lights on my car and I decide if I decide to sell it, of course, I'm going to want to show that, right? My lights look beautiful. They're completely see-through, like they're brand new. I will tell you also, just a little advice. They sell these uh, laminate, uh, plastic laminate, like rubber, very thin rubber, and you put it over your lights when they're new so that they don't turn yellow, okay? Uh, you can look for that for your model car. They sell it for all cars. It's probably, you know, 40, 50 American dollars for both front lights and it's well worth the money. I'm putting new lights on my truck and I already bought the laminate for those lights. As soon as I put them on, I'm slapping on that laminate and they'll last forever. Because you can always peel it, you know, if it starts turning, starts getting dinged or scratched, you peel it and you put another one on. It's like putting a, you know, something on your phone to keep it protected on the front so it doesn't scratch. Same concept. The last thing I want to talk about is Talking about exterior, this is kind of interior, but it's the interior of your engine, which is the exterior of the car, really, right? It's not the inside of where you sit. So make sure when you go to wash your car that you give your engine. I didn't do it for this video. See, what when I recorded this video, I had washed my car on the outside and I and I kind of cleaned it in the inside, but I didn't give it the detail that I normally do. I was going to do that after I, I, I you know, I filmed it because I was actually in the middle of detailing my car when I decided to do this video. So the car actually looks a lot better on the outside uh, now when I'm when I'm recording this because I've already taken all those pictures. I've, I've done the detailing and I also washed the engine bay and cleaned it all up. And, you know, I, I do a lot to the engine bay as well. Uh, and in the pictures that I took, I, I hadn't done that. But you want to do the same thing. Take a wide picture of your engine bay. Make sure you show that everything's there and everything's work. You know, not everything's working. They don't know that, but everything's there, right? Hopefully it's not too dirty. If you've been keeping up with it, it's going to be a little dirty, but it won't be all grimy and, you know, greasy, right? Um, and then if you have anything, any features, like you have a turbo you want to show, then you go back to close-up mode and you zoom in and you show your turbo. Maybe you bought a brand new battery like an Optima, which is an expensive battery for cars, a uh, high performance battery for people that want to put extra things like, you know, um, performance packages on their cars or stereo with more watts, right? More power. They're going to need a bigger battery, a stronger battery, I should say. Uh, if you have a cold air intake or a special filter that breathes more air so your car has better performance, uh, like the truck, my truck has it. But like I said, I hadn't cleaned the interior yet, so it's going to look dirty. But it's okay. At least I'm showing that I have a cold air intake. Um, so that's a reason to use close-up in the engine bay, right? Anything that you've added or you want to highlight in your engine bay, use close-ups. One thing I forgot to mention in this video is, and I'm using my cell phone to film this right now, one thing I forgot to mention is B-roll. If you have some small videos you want to film as you're walking around the car, showing the, the sills of the car, um, maybe even if you want to show how good your stereo sounds, whatever it is. If you have some small clips that you want to show, that's perfectly okay. Some sites allow you to load, upload some small videos. Others don't. They only allow pictures. So depending on where you're publishing your car, you know, you may be limited, but keep in mind, you're absolutely allowed to do that. We were just covering photography, so I stuck to that, but I want to let you know, you can always, always take small videos and keep them. If anything, just to send them to people that are interested, you can email them to them. Okay. So keep that in mind. So we now get to the end of the video, right? The conclusion is basically a small summary, which talks about everything we discussed, right? The five major things. Number one is going to be Detailing, cleaning the car. Number two, picking a location that makes sense, right? Number three, camera settings. What are you going to be looking at in your phone uh, so you can take these pictures quickly, easily, without worrying too much, right? Interior shots, how to do it, what to, what to look for, and exterior shots, okay? You should have really everything you need now to go out and take some decent pictures and get that car sold quickly. Let me know in the comments if the pictures that I took look okay. 
And if you would buy my 10 year old truck, it's a 10 year old truck. Uh, if you would buy it just by the pictures that you looked at and keep in mind that I didn't finish detailing it. If I was actually going to sell it, I would have detailed the rest of it before taking those pictures. Interior, exterior, I would have done even, you know, not even better job. It's the job I always do. I just didn't finish it when I took these pictures. I, I hadn't, I, you know, I wasn't complete yet. So if you enjoyed this, if it was useful, please give me a like, uh, hit the little thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe down below. I will keep putting content out that's hopefully useful to you. And we will see each other again in the next video. From the heart, always, ciao for now.